Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but homongers and adulterers God shall judge. Hi friends, how are you? Thank you for joining and we are studying the topic of courtship and marriage. But before we dive into today's short session, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you made marriage to be honorable and holy. And as we discuss things about this holy institution, we ask that your spirit will be with us, that he will impress upon our minds the truths that are written in your word. Thank you for listening and thank you for being with every viewer. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer. There's not one marriage in a hundred that results happily, that bears the sanction of God and places the parties in a position better to glorify him. What that means simply is in 100 marriages, there's not one that results happily. It's a pretty sad state of affairs. But why is it so? When they get married, there seems to be a rush and a surge of happiness, right? And it's so hard to imagine that not one in 100 marriages end up happily. Compare that statement with this. Courtship as carried on in this day and age is a scheme of deception and hypocrisy with which the enemy of souls has more to do than the Lord. So what does that statement mean? The way courtship is carried out today, it is the devil that has to do with that. Then you begin to understand why not one in a hundred marriages are happy. Many of us youth think that marriage is for fun, that the purpose of marriage is to have fun with the one whom you think you love. But the purpose of marriage, the purpose of the ties and affections between a man and a woman is not primarily for fun. Marriage is a very holy and a sacred institution. And as such, in order that the parties may maintain happiness, they must follow the principles that created marriage to begin with. In the original purpose of marriage, God desired or designed that marriage should be happy. So we read from Matthew 19 and we read verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god has joined together let no man put asunder the principle is this what god has joined together not what we have joined together. Now let's go to other texts in the Bible that will help to establish this principle. Turn with me to Proverbs 19 verse, verse 14. The last part of that verse says, A prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from whom? From the Lord. And when you go just a few verses behind to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22, it says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now let me ask a few questions to you ladies. If a prudent wife, a good wife, or the right wife is from the Lord, then who does she belong to? Wouldn't she have to belong to the Lord if the Lord gave her away? Could the Lord give a wife to a man if the wife is not in the hands of the Lord to give away then if a girl wants to found a Christian home who should she give herself to she would have to give herself to the Lord my dear ladies the Lord knows who you can best be happy with therefore our duty is to give ourselves fully and completely to the Lord and then he can give us a way to a man that he has chosen for us when he is ready to. See, the problem today is that many ladies 
go hunting for men but the wife is the one being given away to a man so what the world does is opposite to what the principle of god is and now to the men where do you get a good wife to whom do you go to to get a good wife to the lord right because the verse says you get a good wife you obtain a good wife from the lord therefore when you desire to marry who should you consult with first it should be the lord this may seem like a strange or an unachievable thing but remember there's not one in a hundred marriages that results happily and how are the people of today or how is everyone else conducting their marriage they follow the worldly way which is the way that satan has more to do with than the lord does so then the first principle is this ladies give yourself completely and wholly to the lord and when he is ready he will give you a way for marriage men to obtain a good wife consult with the lord he knows who you can best be happy with a Christian home must be founded on Christian principles. These principles are not popular. These principles are not what the world follows. They cannot be the same. They will make you look peculiar. They will make you sometimes in human eyes look as foolish. But you know, the foolishness of God is wisdom. And the wisdom of man is foolishness. The ways of the Lord do not always make sense to our little human minds, but that does not mean they cannot be trusted to bring us to happiness.